Hey everybody and welcome to Adobe Live. My name is Flynn. I'm with the fantastic Jeremy Lord. Great to see you, Jeremy. Good to How be here, you? man. Thanks for having me. Thank you for jumping on. It's always a pleasure. We were just chatting before how much fun we have on the stream. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, and we'd like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land in which we're streaming and creating from today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. Great to see some friendly faces in chat. Lovely to see you. Uh, Murder the Void is here. Steve is here. Um, and Dee is here. It's been a while since we've seen you, Dee, so it's great to see you. I hope you're doing well. Um, and if you're new to the stream, uh, jump, over, uh, jump on over to behance.net slash live. Jump into chat. Let us know how you're going. We hope you're doing well. Um, keeping your head above water at the moment in these trying times. Um, and uh, come and say hello. If you're over on YouTube, we'll keep an eye on that chat, but our main chat is over at Behance. Um, so, Jeremy, what have you been up to lately? What have we all been up to lately? <laughs> hey, like... Spending a lot just, of time like, in your apartment, yeah? Yep, yeah, doing okay. doing a fair bit of work. Um, and if I'm being honest, also playing a lot of video games. Yes, what are you playing? Let's do that. Let's get this out of the way. Um, dude, I've... Well, so I just scored a PS5. Um, oh right! Uh, I know. Yep. Super, super lucky. A um, couple of few mates of mine got together for my fortieth, like eight months ago, um, and it's just finally arrived. Wow! Um, so yes, yeah, so I've been playing a little bit of Spider Man. Um, playing, um, just downloaded um, Final Fantasy fourteen online actually, and gotten into that. I've heard good things. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's really cool, man. It's like I'm a little bit. Um, I'm pretty like nubbly at the moment, so. We'll see, but um, yeah, I'm I'm afraid it might be a very deep, dark hole to sink myself into. But hey, I mean, it doesn't look like New South Wales is going out of lockdown anytime soon. So, you what does it matter? Some time on your hands. <laughs> yeah. Um, for context, yep. Jeremy and I like have both played a lot of World of Warcraft and stuff like that before, even together, um, which is good. Yeah. Which is good times. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm almost like. I need to stay away from that. Start another whole like addictive like thing. Um, well, you've got already a real life tune that you need to level up, don't you? That's true. Yeah, the little one takes yeah. a lo takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Nicola in, is saying Spider Man is a great game. Um, yeah, I yeah, wish loving I, that so far. Some games are just like you really need a control, right? And I feel like you know, I remember from the original Spider Man in uh, PlayStation, it was. Like just, it felt so good, and so many people talking about how good that game is. So, yeah, whatever. We could talk about computer games all day. Um, we for could, sure. And I'm sure we'll thread it in there. Um, I've been playing um, the uh, Diablo three again, just to kind of get hyped up for um, oh, yeah. D two Resurrected. But you know, we'll talk about that in a bit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but today, yeah, we had this like idea, and I thought I think this is really cool is um, designing a playing card. Um, so Jeremy and I were chatting about ideas for the next stream a while ago, um, and the idea of you know creating your own like playing deck cards, um, yep. and what would the Jeremy Lord take be on that? Um, I did a poll, you know, should it be the Jack? Should it be the King or the Queen? Jeremy quickly answered Queen. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> which is super cool because you had this awesome idea should we jump over to your desktop and have a look at yeah yeah let's have a look start? let's do it um I love so this. we're in photoshop as always um so this is my graceland um <laughs> where so taking that kind of brief i thought like all right um what's what's some sort of like queen that uh, obviously the first kind of idea that comes to mind is always to kind of do like a, a geisha work kind of anime but um nice to kind of keep things a little bit different every now and then and kind of go back to the roots of like pop culture references and all that um and so i thought who's the most kind of like badass kind of queen in terms of movies and like yeah helen ripley, ripley. just gotta gotta be number one on that list for sure in my book Sick. um so i've got what i've got here is just like a sketch that i prepared this is still pretty loose so there's still a lot of work to be done here um, a lot of resolving things before i can start to finalize this but always good to like get this going pretty quickly um you can see i've got a couple of layers here just so i can like fiddle around with uh, different things um but in essence the the idea here is like all right do i do like a playing card that's your kind of standard playing card where you've got like the cut diagonal in the middle. And then basically we've just got like a mirror image reflected on both sides of, mm. of the same thing. Like, is that what we're doing? Um, like that's more your kind of standard playing card or do I try and do something a little bit more like modern, I guess, where it's like a full, full body character 
um, still have the kind of the you know the icons of a playing card, um, but maybe more of a character, maybe something that's a little bit more expressive mm. in that sense. So I'm actually going to do something a little bit kind of mix in between the two, where um, as you guys can see, I've got. Um, I've got Ripley here in the foreground, and obviously it has to be Aliens, right? The second Alien um, series installment in the series. Um, I think probably the best one. I'd, I'd be curious, actually, let us know in the poll which one's your favorite one. I'd go for number two, mm. and very, very closely followed by number three. Um, but yeah, so I've got this, and then in the background, I think I'm going to put the, the Alien Queen behind her, get a little bit of a kind of a dynamic, like, story going kind of like antagonizing mm. the two characters so there's there's still that kind of like two characters in there they're not the same character but something just a little bit more interesting um for me to kind of work with cool and then beyond that what i've got on the side here is a, just a folder full of references that i get online so references um inspiration kind of slightly two different things um inspiration from this um, and I guess you could also say reference is um, 1980s anime. Yeah. Very, very specific style with that. Um, usually what you can kind of see some of those characteristics is the eyes, the shape of the head, and how big the hair is. So 80s, big hair. Um, usually you get this, like this kind of thing is what you'd get in that um, kind of anime. Nowadays, the eyes tend to be a little bit, um, a little bit simpler. Um, but yeah, this is these are the days that I got into anime, so there's always that kind of nostalgia for me. And that's cool. Um, that, so like, that's, fit, that suits with like Aliens too, right? Probably came out yeah, like mid exactly. 80, like 85, 86 totally. or something. Anyway, so that's um, really nice. Yeah, so it, like it's not something that I'm used to drawing all the time, to be honest. Like usually I'll tend to go with something a little bit more kind of nowadays with manga just because it's a little bit easier to draw yeah. um so this is a little bit out of my comfort zone so i kind of need the 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 um the kitty wheels on to to work with this one um and then i've just got a bunch of references on the side here like what does the the rifle look like what's her outfit like um and obviously what does the queen look like these are things that i haven't really drawn before um, and when you're doing something like this, obviously you kind of have to get the reference right if it's going to be some kind of fan art. Mm. But then beyond that, the the inspiration from this, like I've gotten her as it kind of sits for real in the movie. So this is kind of like movie accurate, I guess. Mm. But what I might do um, with this is go and kind of see, like I do like the jumpsuit that she wears in the first installment. Yeah, um, that kind of like blue whale and Utani jumpsuit. So I, I could kind of play around with that, and then take some kind of creative license to, you know, like maybe do a little <clears throat> bit of a crossover. Sorry, whale and Utani. That's the like company, right? Like that's like the brand. yeah, like, yeah. That's, that's, the, that's the the bad guys. Bad the guys, essentially the corporate, corporate overlords. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, so that's like, yeah, that could be something that could be cool because what that would then do is it would allow me to put in a whole bunch of like little badges and things in here and like, I guess maybe do a little bit of like a Akira cyberpunky kind of like pop this up a little bit. Um, something that I like to do a lot of the time is put the kind of like band-aids on things that just makes it look a little bit more kind of um, got a bit of an attitude. Mm. Um, sometimes I'll put kind of like demon horns on there, but hairdo doesn't really kind of fit with this. But yeah, there's there's always going to be this thing for me where it's like, all right, how can I kind of make this uh, a little bit kind of a little bit more surprising where it's not necessarily just, you know, like completely copied referenced fan art. Right. Um, there's a little bit of a kind of a, a twist to this. Um, so yeah, so we'll we'll kind of see what happens with that. Um, and how we can kind of play around with that where, you know, whether it's like the patch on her arm here, um, which from like all these kind of references, you can see like, this is the kind of Whaling Yutani logo. So I, I'd get a folder with all these kind of references to see what happens on there. Like what's the shape of the hair? How can I kind of express that in a simpler kind of manga way? Mm. Um, so I might kind of take a bit of freedom with that and, you know, like add a little kind of like um, smiley face on this instead. Uh, and see kind of how that kind of feels. So I kind of step away from from the pure kind of actual 
um, hero. Yeah. And just kind of give her a little bit more um, me, I guess. And do you often find that you, like, when you're working from references, it's, like, quite it's quite close to everything and then you kind of come back in and then yeah. add a bit of flavor or is it kind of more as you go? No, it's it'd definitely be, like, come back in once once the thing is, right? It's, like, learn learn how to walk before you can fly kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, like, yeah, do the – well, that's my process at least. Like, do the real thing first um, and then see, A, if it's appropriate – to do stuff like it's not always necessarily appropriate which is why i've done this on a separate layer and a separate color mm. um because it might be confusing um the other thing as well is for something like this i think there's always like you have to consider if you're going to step away from reality make sure you make that clear an example um that i always use is like make your intentions clear if it's just this, for instance, um, if like I'm, if I'm not messing around with it enough, then it just looks like I got it wrong. Right. Right. Like it just looks like, oh no no, you didn't watch the movies. You're not a true diehard fan. Mm. Um, that's not the jumpsuit. She doesn't wear that uh, at, in that scene in that bit at the right. end of Aliens. Um, so with something like this, it might be a better idea to go, you know, make it really clear and add these kind of things in there so that the the reaction of people is obviously like okay there's no way he got it that wrong mm. so therefore that must be intentional so it's not a mistake do you know what i mean right yeah um, yeah and the example that i always use um which is a very kind of basic example but like in making your intentions clear is if you're gonna draw a line on an angle like make sure you make it clear that it's on an angle um Whereas, like, if it's a straight line, then obviously it's straight. But if you just do, like, this, mm. it's like, ah, uh, did you mean to make it straight? Yeah. And you messed up, or is it, it reminds it's me like it's not really enough on an angle to make it make your intention clear in that sense? It reminds me, like, in graphic design, like there was, there's, it's always like it, either it's got to be on the line or off the line, like, or yeah. on the grid or off the grid, like. You know, it can't be like, if it's slightly off, it really looks like a mistake. So like, you know, especially when you're dealing with like printing or like things being offset, like, mm -hmm. is it is it off the bleed or is it on the bleed? If you try to put it like right on there, the, you know, like, you might get these little errors. So yeah, yeah. that makes sense. Like, um, oh, I just found out Johanna hasn't watched Alien yet. So um, <laughs> thanks. Thanks, thanks for all your work so far. Um, lovely to have you. Please go watch Alien, then come back. Um, should we just should we just pause it? Like you go watch it, we'll just wait, and we we'll can just start wait. again. Yeah, just go watch it, <laughs> sort it out. Jahan, you're um, the best. There you go. Some homework for you for sure. So, all right. So cool. So we'll we'll park this layer for now. We'll see what we do with it. Um, whether you know, like if I maybe I'll add like a little kind of bunny backpack on her or something and. Kind of have have some fun with this and see kind of where it ends up. Mm. Uh, but for now, let's let's kind of park this and kind of move along with um, this illustration and see where we kind of end up with it. So I'll just call this parked. Doesn't need to make sense. Just needs to make sense for me. Um, and then kind of continue with this. So there's a few different things happening here where I've kind of I've got the bulk of the pose down. Um, there might be things where I feel like maybe things are a little bit unbalanced. So one of the things I will do at this stage is I will play around with the liquify filter. Um, and always a little bit hard to see when it's on a transparent background like this, but it, this can be really cool to get you to um, get that angle of the pose a little bit better, get that movement in the pose a little bit better. So you see like here, for instance, what I've done is I've just kind of just looks like she's doing a bit of a dance, a but dance. Yeah. Um, just making that kind of like, you know, the, that line of action in the middle, just making sure that that weight is more evenly spread. Whereas this kind of, she's kind of leaning a little bit too far backwards. Mm. Um, so little things like that, that I could kind of mess around with that could work. Um, things like this, where I can kind of foresee the hand that's here, like this hand, is not going to be able to reach down on the handle of that rifle. Right. Um, so I'll literally kind of like do a little kind of puppeteering thing where I'll just take the bulk of this 
um, transform it and then move the, the center point, so the thing that it's going to rotate around on the hinge of the elbow, and then that can just move the arm a little bit further mm -hmm. down without having to redraw the whole thing. Um, yeah, it's just a good little kind of time saver at this stage. There can be moments where it's like, all right, well, that's not working now because the the um, forearm is a little bit too long compared to the upper arm. Um, so we got to kind of maybe fix that and the angle of the hand won't work. But at this stage, again, I'm just doing sketches. So it's not, not going to get too bogged down in um, the details and just make sure that the actual pose is correct. Otherwise, like when I start building this later on, it's just not going to work. Right. Um, I'll give her a little, the little tracker watch that she has that she tracks Newt with. That's really cool. Yeah. And what, while you're doing that, I'm just going to check in with chat. Um, some really great suggestions. Um, um, also, congrats Canada on winning a medal in the Olympics. That's awesome. Oh. I'm just picturing you guys like watching like 50 different things at once and Adobe Live is one of them. It's like <laughs> the Olympics <laughs> news, <laughs> Adobe Live. Um, Festus has also said um, she should she could have a katana too, as well as the rifle. She could do, yeah. She could do, um, absolutely. Um, yeah. Or twin Sai, like uh, Raphael from uh, our favorite turtle family. Um, yeah, or like, which is cool. She's got a little bit of an April O'Neil kind of haircut, actually. Could just yeah. give her like the full like April O'Neil treatment. Yeah. Um, there's also like yeah, there's there's a range of different things that could happen here um, at this stage, um, where again, because the hair is on a separate layer, like maybe I go back to the roots and then just kind of do the the demon geisha hairdo kind of thing, mm. um, and see how that kind of looks. Is it gonna make sense? Like, is it just too far-fetched that like, what's the deal here? Why is Ripley turned into a geisha? Like a, maybe that doesn't make heaps of sense. Like how far can you push, push it? Yeah, like it, then it's just like, you're just kind of doing what you wanna do. There's not really necessarily an idea behind it. Um, if we're talking about the 80s kind of vibe, then like maybe I start thinking about like, oh, maybe I can put some like, 80s things in the background and give mm. us some like um i don't know give us some like rad kind of like pit viper kind of visor maker all like commando style that kind of stuff there's a range of different things like this is like for me this is a little bit like this is why i like playing rpgs and mmos and stuff it's like the character creation of a lot of these games is where i kind of really have a lot of fun yeah um, spent and, days in skyrim just creating yeah, characters that original exactly. one was mind-blowing yeah yeah uh, and things like like we were just talking about like final fantasy there's just so many options and colors and it's like it's like playing dress up um and it can it can be super fun to to kind of play around with that stuff um you have to not yeah. you have to not mention final fantasy anymore dude because it's just I, i'm getting the itch and it's very <laughs> very very dangerous um scaring me quite a lot um <laughs> Uh, there's a question Nicola in chat has said, have you tried creating um, uh, using gold leaf? I think your style with gold leaf on some parts of the detail would look dope. Yeah, so I, it's, it's an interesting kind of comment because I'm actually talking with my printer, um, Robert Wade, the guy who works at a company called Box Imaging in Sydney. And I highly recommend actually, if you guys um, are in Sydney, based in Sydney, and you need some super high-end prints done, um, this guy's got you covered, absolutely. Mm. And he's just gotten in some um, materials like like metallic foil, kind of that like sticks to the um, to the print. And so you'd like you do it just basically like any other kind of thing. And I'm talking with him at the moment about doing some like neon pink ones and some gold and some reds to like really kind of pick things up a little bit, um, which I think could really like look really cool. So yeah, that's definitely something that I am um, thinking about at the moment for sure. Nice. It's on the cards, so to speak. It is on the cards. Um, so Johanna asked before, um, any chance you would ever make a physical card deck? What, like, what, what would it take to do something like this? Like, obviously, as an illustrator, you could kind of look at, you could look at everything, right? You could be like, oh, I want to make tote bags, or I want to make a, a book, or I want to do a plain deck cards. Like, have, have you ever considered doing a deck? I guess just to answer Johanna's question. And then the other thing is, like, what would what would stop you? Would you look at it and be like, actually, this would be a huge undertaking to get right or something else um 
I think it's like it wouldn't take very much actually to make a deck. It's just a matter of like again, like knowing the right people who can help you actually produce mm. the deck um, and get that um, yeah, looking the way you need it to look um, and like produce it not necessarily like crazy expensive. Um, really the main the, cup, the the questions that I would kind of go through on stuff like this because you get heaps of suggestions and anybody who's kind of done like photography or music or anything like that like the amount of times that somebody in my family or in my entourage would be like oh you should make a children's book like i mm. my friend blah 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 has a story and like they'd love it illustrated it's like nah just <laughs> not like you're not you know like not because i don't want to do it because your friend's annoying or whatever um nothing like that it's just that's not like that doesn't really fit with what i would do mm. um i have thought many times about making a like a playing card deck because like i like the idea of doing a series and a playing obviously like a deck of cards is a really good um way of making a series of different things where like you've developed an idea and trying to make sure that that idea kind of holds true in a range of different things so it's like you really need to analyze why you did and what are the components of what you did um it's it's like a yeah it's like a recipe right like food analogy number one number one um he's keeping count but we like if you if you do something and it's just a, like a, a fluke like you don't really know why you did it and it's like a, a you might not be able to reproduce it again the next time whereas working with series of things really kind of forces you to go like all right this is the recipe these are the ingredients this is how i do it mm. how do i use those to create something else that's going to look like it's part of the same um recipe that can be a really interesting exercise to to work on and like yeah playing a deck of cards is definitely um something that's really that's that's what it's all about yeah um but it's it's more just like i don't know that that would fit super well with what i kind of do like the world that i build i guess in terms of or like the brand that i build so mm. that would be kind of the main consideration is not so much like how could i do this but why would i do this right um and so yeah so things like tote bags and stuff like sure that could be fun but like that doesn't make any sense yeah not not for me because it's not really like you only have like 250 tote bags in your bedroom yeah like if i was seven years if i was somebody who did like very bright colorful illustrations that are quite like summery or beachy or whatever then like yeah okay that makes sense mm. um what makes more sense for me i think is things like um hoodies and gear and t-shirts and stickers and all that kind of stuff because that's that's the kind of skateboarding anime pop art kind of thing mm. um so those things make a little bit more sense in that way but um yeah look i mean you know never say never it's cool i like it um Nicola was saying I wouldn't use them as cards. I display them in a frame so people can look and don't touch. Um, yeah. It's it's funny with some of that stuff, isn't it? I, I actually got we used to have used to do um, this series. And long story short, Mailchimp was a sponsor, and, and then one day they just sent us this giant box full of like all this Mailchimp swag mm-hmm. stuff. And something we got were playing cards, and I've still got them kicking around here somewhere. I think I've got one left. We gave most of them away. Um, but I never used them. They just sat in the drawer because they were really nice. They were like printed really well. And we were talking about um, like gold leaf. They were foiled as well. Like the outside of the, the actual box itself on the outside was nicely foiled. Um, mm-hmm. But it was almost like, oh, cool. I'll keep these because they're, they're so pretty and nice and special and like unique. You couldn't buy them. You could only be gifted them. Um, but they just sit in a drawer. So yeah. I don't know. That's all right though. Like, I mean, this this one that I'm doing here is probably more in terms of like design is probably more akin to like a poster than a deck of cards really um and it's probably like that's probably how i would produce something like this is just make it into a poster um just because yeah i think it just lends itself a little bit more to Mm. that um but again yeah never say never so yeah you never know what's going to come around Yep. Um, Johanna asks, 
Um, speaking of, what's your process like when you're considering making a new product featuring your work? Like a list of things you would never do. Um, we just kind of went over the never say never. So, or, or things you really want to do. In terms of like actual like gear that I would make. Yeah. I guess we kind of, we spoke about that a bit, maybe that question was a while ago, like you spoke about hoodies and stuff. So I guess is it because it's your brand, it's stuff that you would want to, is that kind of the thinking? Like- Kinda, yeah, yeah. yeah. kinda. It's like, what would I like to have um, or do? And, it, and I mean, there is, I guess that position as well, where it's like, I'm in a position to make stuff. So if I'm looking for a new hoodie or a new pair of shoes or whatever, or anything like that, and I can't find what I like, then it's like, all right, plan B. I'll mm. just make it myself. Yeah. Um, which like obviously is maybe like an oversimplification of that process, but um, because there's a lot of kind of stuff that goes into that, if, especially if you're making a pair of shoes, which I've never done before. But there's plenty of people on YouTube that I've seen and it's like, all right, well, maybe I should do that. Um, where they just take like they buy a pair of shoes, like a blank white pair of like Air Force Ones or whatever. Mm. And then they just customize it themselves. Um, often those kind of things, they're not to be like necessarily worn um, because the paint they use might not like be super waterproof or anything like that. Mm. Um, but still, you know, like I've, I definitely like, I wear a lot of the stuff that I've made over the time. I wear a lot of the stuff you've made, like <laughs> three of your shirts. <laughs> um, so yeah, like it, it's it is absolutely like what would I, like what would I make? Like what yeah. would be the thing that I would do? Um, what would I wear? Because, because yeah, you want to be like, you want to have it be fun for you to make, and you don't want to make something that you wouldn't wear yourself, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, totally. A bit of, of a hard time with this hand. The, the hand on the handle of the gun just like made itself. Sometimes it happens, like you just get, like you get it right the first time and you have no idea why, but it's just like, leave it, it's good. It's right. <laughs> um, and then other ones is like, oh man, this one's just not working at all. Because mm. hands are like notoriously the hardest thing to, yes, uh, one 100%. of the hardest things to draw, right? Like Yeah, 100%. Mm. Um, in a case like this, there's two ways you can go about it. Either you can persevere and just like, Go back to the roots of like, all right, this is what a hand looks like. Um, we're going to cut it up into this here, and then that's where it kind of goes. Um, and then how do we wrap this around like kind of the handle of the gun? Mm. Uh, like, all right. Or just because in the movies, as you can see, she's not actually got her hand there. Yeah. Because it's on the side, it as I in think. Behind. Yeah. I remember. Or it could be like on her hip on the other side. Like, um, it could be a range of different things here that could work, but it, yeah, either I just don't, I just don't draw it and I just leave it like that, mm. um, which is the kind of the lazy out, but you see a lot of people kind of do that where it's like, oh, how can I hide the feet or the hands? Um, yeah. Because they're the hardest bits to draw for sure. Um, and so that is definitely one of the things that I would do in scenarios like this is just go like, all right, maybe the hand is like just hidden somewhere else. Uh, and maybe I'll come back to it a little bit later on and see if I can, you know, muster up the the skill to actually do this properly. Mm. <clears throat> yeah, I imagine you spend a bit of time working on something like it's not working for whatever reason, I'll move on, do something else, come yep. back to it kind of with fresh eyes sort of thing. Um, I meant to say this before, but um, you got the look of determination down on Ripley's face, like, so well. Like, that look Thanks. Is, is great. It works so well in the context of aliens as well, because she could be, mm -hmm. like, checking, checking the corners for face huggers and stuff like that. Johanna, you won't get that reference. It's from the movie. Um, but, yeah, it's super cool. I've just Thanks. been staring at her face. Yeah. It's, it's um, yeah, it's something that's kind of, like, can be kind of tricky to, to get. Um, after a while and it's definitely something as well that I will um, potentially kind of play around with a little bit mm. when I'm doing this especially to get um, to like even that selection that looks a little bit like Tracer's mask a little bit like maybe mm. I do something like that um, we'll see but um, I will often like cut something out like this um, paste it back in place and then try a different style so like, we're talking about that kind of like manga style Kind of eyes um let's see what that kind of looks like if i get rid of this and i work with that aesthetic a little bit more 
to try and get that kind of 1980s vibe happening a little bit more. Mm. Um, and again, like this means obviously like this is a little bit out of my comfort zone because this is not usually how I would um, draw these guys and, and these things. So, you know, it's always a little bit, can always be a little bit challenging when you do this kind of stuff. But I find it super fun because once this has been done once, right? Like my brain is like, cool, I know how to do this. It's like you learn, mm. you kind of learn the, the recipe for this. Um, and then next time you won't struggle with it quite as much. And it might be something that will be a little bit more, um, a little bit easier for you to work with. Mm. Um, so yeah. So here we go. Let's try and give her like slightly bigger, rounder eyes and then reflections galore. Um, and this is where that reference comes in handy. I might just move it over a little bit closer so I can see what I'm doing. Um, where are we? It's this like one. three reflections there. Yeah, yeah, this is real big because it's like you got to make them look alive. Um, and often you'll see kind of like the animation of that is just in their eyes. Like you'll see little kind of like animated GIFs of that. And it's just the kind of the shines of the eyes that are kind of like twinkling a little bit. Mm. Um, and it just gives it a little bit of life as well. Um, so that is not too bad. See what we think about that and how that looks compared cool. to this or that. Like, yeah, wow. slightly different. So I haven't nailed it. There's some, there's real subtlety. I think like a lot of people just look at the manga style and be like, oh, it's this. It's just giant eyes. It's like, yeah, but it's not. Mm. There's not a lot of nuance quite. in there. Yeah, there's a lot of nuance in there. You got to get it, the size right. You got to get the angle on the head right. You got to get the placement on the head right. Like, there's a real like I think there's a real science to this and it's like yeah it's not to be underestimated at all um I quite dig that over this what do you guys think we'll call this number two and we'll call this number one that's great because it's just like when you go to the optometrist and it's like number one number yeah two. number one or number two what do we what think number two that's number one that's number one number two Number two. Man, it's crazy. I thought you nailed it the first time. But there's something about the shiny sparkle that's really cool. Yeah, this this is maybe a little bit more cartoony, less kind of manga -y. This one's maybe a little bit more manga -y. Mm. I'm not really feeling the placement of the pupils on this one, though. And again, like, this is where, you know, you could go on forever doing this, um, and then you don't really get your artwork done. Um, in the way that you should. Um, it's, it's just, I, uh, I'm just not feeling like she's looking over her shoulder enough. Mm. That's better. Yeah, wow. Yeah, you wouldn't think you would like notice it so much when you're so far zoomed out, but like it's such a small detail, but then you can, yeah. you can really see it. I could see how you could like agonize over these details like quite a lot. It's it, well because all of the expression is right here, right? right. Like this is where most people are going to be looking for the, the bulk of this image. Um, and so getting that right, especially if there's going to be a relationship in between her and the background where the queen's going to go in the background and she's looking somewhere, like you need to get that right. Otherwise, mm. it just won't work. Um, and so this one I feel is probably more like direction accurate. Um, but this one, I like the style a little bit more. I just, I, I don't know, it's something weird about this one. And th this is the other thing as well. Like you spend a lot of time as an artist trying to figure out why the thing is wrong. I think yeah. it's like, you know, like you're like a chef and it's like, is it too salty? Is it, too, what's the, what's, what's missing here? Like I, something's off. I can see that, but I don't know what it is. And it can be really infuriating at times to kind of just like, what is it that's doing this? Mm. Too much salt. Too much salt. Um, cool. oh, I need to do the flamethrower because she's so 
into it that she's strapped. Remember that? She's like strapped to like a flamethrower to her actual like rifle machine gun. Right. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, I missed a couple of questions, so I'm just going to check in with chat. Um, Nicola was saying, still waiting for that Jeremy Lord PlayStation controller skin. <laughs> Who do I contact for this? This, so uh, we're talking about like things that I would do. Like obviously, I wouldn't know how to produce that myself. But um, we talk about this every now and then of like you know do the work you want to be asked to do kind of thing. And like mm. that would definitely be something that I would absolutely work on as a personal project, and then try yeah. and get that across to somebody at Sony to to get something like that going. Um, and there's there's different ways you can do something like that. I think like you, either you can do it like direct through somebody like Sony or you can approach it from the aspect of like one of the main kind of titles that people are playing on it and try and approach the studio that's releasing an exclusive and then do it that way. Mm. Um, so you might do like a, you know, Spider-Man, we're talking about Spider-Man, you might do a Spider-Man controller um, and see like how if you can get someone at like either like Marvel Studios or Insomnia um, Insomnia is the game development studio who makes Spider-Man. Right. Um, to, to produce that for you. And then there's like, yeah, it's, there's, there's always kind of things that you can try and do um, for this stuff that, um, that could be really super fun to do. But that would definitely be like, I guess, on brand for lack of a better word. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Um, got a question um from uh rifki wanted to train myself to make these i assume he's talking about kind of your illustrative work um what should i do first though so i guess what's like kind of your general go-to advice for someone who wants to learn how to illustrate um other i mean you're classically trained i mean like doing this for 20 or 20 plus years more um mm -hmm. so that always helps um but someone getting into it what's your what's your go-to bit of advice uh, practice, 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 okay. practice. It's, yeah, there's no, like, I know that's kind of sucks. It's a bit frustrating to hear. Um, but I want to be good now. Well, yeah, I think this <laughs> is where I, like, I draw the line in between skill and talent. Right. Um, and, like, this is me. This is my own, like, personal opinion. This isn't necessarily, like, you know, the reality of the world um, and of illustration and stuff. But in, for me, the way I see it is skill can be learnt or taught. Um, talent is you're, you're born with it or you're not. And right. I think that people kind of chasing that idea of like, like people like um, like Kim Jung Ji, for instance, who's just like ridiculously good. He just like draws these huge frescoes with a p inkbrush, just from like out of his brain. He's got no sketch. Like that for me is talent, and obviously like skill as well, right? Like those two mm. things go hand in hand. You can't have one necessarily without the other. Um, the skill allows you to express your talent, I guess. Um, but I think somebody looking at that and going like, I want to be able to do that. I don't know that that's necessarily like unrealistic in that sense, but I, I, I kind of unrealistic because it's just that that's like this person has a brain that works in a certain way. Um, and that's why they're able to do it. It's like Mozart, right? It's just like, you could just hear a thing and then like everybody else is like, what the hell? Like, how is that even possible? Right. Um, I don't think that's something that you can, strive for and if you do i think that's probably just going to leave you super frustrated mm. um because you're just never going to get there um but you can yeah practice 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 and you get your skills to work in a way that you're able to express what you want to express and like draw what you want to draw right um because drawing sucks when you feel that you're bad at it right like anything else when you don't think you're good at something doing that thing is not fun like good enough for yourself like kind of being satisfied with yeah you know, exactly. what you're producing or feel like you're growing exactly when you're yeah. not happy with what you're doing and you feel like you're struggling and you're not like getting the results that you want to get doing that thing is not fun at all 
mm. is not enjoyable in the slightest. Um, so I think it's like something definitely to, to consider is getting that skill level up so that you're in a position to be able to at least like speak the language you want to speak. And then you can just start to try and find what it is that you want to say with the things that you've learned, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, I think that would be my, my advice is just like practice um, as much as possible and try and like do the, do the work you want to be asked to do. We kind of like spoke a little bit about that, but mm. for, for just like raw drawing skills, and you see me like tracing something here, um, that, that's okay sometimes too. Like that can be, you know, if you're really struggling to get something right, it can be all right to start with something like this mm. and just trace it. Um, but yeah, I think practice, 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 practice is always just the, the best way to go about it. Um, and unfortunately, yeah, like you said, there's, there's not really any shortcuts. Um, one of the things I always say with that is like, you, you just, you can't microwave a slow roast. The time is one of the ingredients of a slow roast. Right. And if you leave that ingredient out, then it doesn't taste the same. So you just got to put in the time. <laughs> but I put it in the microwave and it just didn't taste very good. Um, yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, bunch of people in chat agreeing with you for sure. Um, also passion. Um, Nicola said, yeah, you obviously need that passion to, to drive you to do the practice, right? Like you need that, yeah. you know, because yeah. otherwise you, you know, feel like you're screaming into the void a little bit. Um, and that's where like community things can be really useful and getting your work out and getting feedback can be really great as well. Or knowing other creatives that you can chat to and getting, getting feedback can be really useful. Um, yep, there's this great series, uh, called Adobe live. You could check out. Um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah, that passion thing. Um, there's also another question, a little bit more from a practical perspective, um, from Alfie, um, asking, do you use pressure sensitivity? I do. Yep. You do. Yeah. So I'm using a, um, a Cintiq, Wacom, Wacom Cintiq. Mm -hmm. Um, by the way, I've. I did a little bit of work with Wacom recently um, and I have always been like, you know, that debate of like, is it, it's kind of like, is it GIF or is it GIF? Um, is it Wacom or is it Wacom? And the, the person I was working with at Wacom was like, well, it's Wacom because it's a Japanese company and so it's Wacom, mm. um, which means how many computers, Wa is Harmony. And so it's just like, oh, okay, so it's Wacom. but um yeah so i use mm -hmm. i use a wacom yeah and um it's just yeah it's got pressure sensitivity inbuilt and it's got a range of different kind of features to allow you to work um with brushes in photoshop in a in a more um kind of evolved way i guess is probably the right word mm -hmm. um so yeah there you go well, there's a follow-up question. There's a follow-up question to that. Do you use paper feel texture for your Wacom? And if so, is it better? Uh, no, I don't because um, it already has, the glass is already kind of like frosted in a way. Right. Uh, and so it has that kind of feeling already. It's got mm. that kind of grippiness already. Um, some people, what you can do as well, a little kind of tip that some people will try and do sometimes is to try and get that kind of graininess because depending on the nib that you use so like every um i don't know if you guys can see that it's not yeah, really I'll focusing. Do that. i'll do that now um, making you big there you go there it is there you go um so there's always like these nibs that you can replace at the top here um and some of them like i'm using a smooth one but some of them have a little bit more kind of grain to them yeah and so that will help you kind of feel a little bit more kind of resistance on the page i guess you told me um, that there was a whole bunch of like nibs in the in the well, like the thing that you put in, is that yeah, right? Yeah, like yeah, yeah. Were? That's right. I was using yeah, so like the one. Stand. I was using the one nib for like a year or something. And Jeremy was like, you know, there's like ten more nibs in that thing, and I'm sure you showed me. In. <laughs> Just a tip. Yeah, so there's there's a bunch in there, so you can do that. Otherwise, what people, <clears throat> excuse me, have done in the past is you can wrap some masking tape around the nib. Okay. Um, just a little bit of it. Um, obviously not too much because then otherwise it won't go into the the pen anymore um 
but you can put in a little bit and that gives it that kind of graininess of like the, the you know the grain of the paper to kind of work with a little bit more um so that can be a, a thing you'll have to replace that like very frequently because it'll wear down super super fast mm. um but yeah that's those are definitely some of the things that you could do but i think if you're super keen on becoming an illustrator then you're gonna need something like a wacom absolutely like you cannot um do that there are some people who have made a career out of drawing with a mouse and that has become kind of their specific style um but yeah the vast majority of artists kind of doing this um professionally will be using something like a Wacom. Yeah. And I think there's some like much more affordable ones out there than they, they used to be back yeah, in the day. Like it's, there's some pretty good entry level things in there as well for hobbyists and, and things like that to kind of test the waters before you jump in. Cause you can spend a lot of money on that sort of thing. So, um, yeah. yeah um, Nicola, I learned something new today. Um, the, the great debate sold by Jeremy. Um, yeah. I just want to address that it's GIF. Um, yeah, it we'll is. Yeah. Um, and Wacom, <laughs> Wacom. See, I just said a Wacom then. So for years I was saying Wacom and I've done a lot of work with those guys myself. I'm sure we know the same people. Um, until one day I, I heard them actually say Wacom. And I was like, mm. oh, wait, wait, is that how you pronounce it? They're like, yeah, it's Wacom. And I'm like, you know, I've been saying like Wacom to this group of people once a month for the last three and a half years. And they're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could have told me. Um, but it's stuck in my head now. It's very Australian, yeah. isn't it? It's a bit ochre. Wacom. I think it's, I actually think it's kind of American. Wacom. Really? Way something. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't know. Maybe. Mm. Um, it's just the way right, I say it. So, we're kind of ready to move on now. I like, I think this, for me, the sketch is probably set enough that I'm happy to like take it to the next level, which is going to be inking um with something like this if i was like trying to do cards like this is just me doing a frame around this um and kind of drawing that frame in um but obviously that might not be the actual dimensions of a playing card so you know you got to kind of factor that in and, and mess around with this if you're going to do um these kind of things you got to think about like what's the actual dimensions of a playing card that i can use yeah. um i could just kind of move her into there a little bit more and see how that looks. But then I'm kind of blocking my alien queen in the background a little bit too much. So I have to kind of consider where that's going to go a little bit. So there's always a little bit of kind of um, messing around that needs to happen with this that I can be able to show the queen as much as possible, I guess. Right. That's not too bad. Because obviously I don't want her to be like, there and then the whole head is hidden and all we're seeing is like these little bits and pieces and you can't see what that is mm. um so potentially like yeah like he is not too bad a little bit of kind of like composition kind of faces a little bit in the gun um yeah not too sure about this um this is also where like sometimes you maybe need to just uh, bite the bullet and do what's called murdering your darlings which is like i quite like the alien in the background but maybe it just doesn't fit um and maybe right. there's nowhere for it to go therefore it needs to just get deleted um and it can be a little bit annoying to do that but if that's if that's what the image requires then that's what the image requires mm. Um, but I think I've found a way. Oops. There we go. That's probably okay. And I've still got the playing card. And then there's room enough for a little emote. Make it nice and manga. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So I think, we, yeah, we're ready to probably move into inking with this. So. Um, normally what I would do on something like this is I'd just go like, bang, group those all together, call this sketch, um, and drop the opacity down on that so I can see what I'm doing and stick a new layer on top of that. Um, and then I would just go straight into my inking. So I've got a few different brushes that I like to use. Um, those of you guys who um, watch stream regularly um, will know that I 
tend to do kind of very kind of smooth lines. Um, and so I'll either use this one, Carl's Manga Brushes. So this is Carl T. Webster um, proprietary brushes that are all built into Photoshop. So if you've got a creative license, creative cloud license, sorry, you can you get those for free and you can just install them. Um, I've made this one from that just because like I, I find that one to work a little bit better for me. So you, so just, you, sorry, you started with that brush that's built in, and then you've made yeah. tweaks to it and saved it, and then saved it as a new brush. Yep. Right, right. So you don't have to like change it every time, and you've just got exactly. it exactly. The, yeah. the main reason I did that is that his brush, whilst better for getting those kind of tapered edges that I like to get. Um, mm. So if we're kind of increase the size here, you can see that it's actually an oval. The brush like shape is an oval. Right, it's like a it's circle. yeah, it's like an angled. Oval, right, to get a yeah. chiseled, chiseled kind of feel. And you can see that that really just looks like a nice brush stroke. Like the bottom here is nice and curved. It's got mm. that kind of natural feeling. So, and then the tip here is nice and super sharp. So that's always super cool. But one of the issues that it has is you can see that when I turn the angle, because it's a directional brush, uh, I don't want to get too technical, whoops, sorry, into that. Oh. Um, you can see that there's kind of funny things happening on the angles there. Um, so that's, you see that kind of happening? Where yeah, it's, it's like kind of, blobbing. Yeah, well, it like kind of looks like to, it's blobbing, but it yeah. It has to rotate this oval, and so it kind of creates weird things in the circle. So, um, you know what? I've, I've, never known, I've never known that. I just learned something that's crazy. I've done that <laughs> so many times. I'm like, why do these corners look rubbish? And I'll like slow it down a lot and then try to turn. I'm like, it's driven yeah. me insane. Ah, oh, it's because it's like an angled chisel oval instead of... Exactly. Okay. So it's it's Good because stuff. you're like imagine like, like the brushes work as a stamp right like right when you look when you go into the 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 details of the brush here if you boost the spacing you can see that all it's doing is just a series of dots so mm -hmm. it's like a stamp that's repeated a bunch of times right um, and when you make that stamp something that's not a circle like let's say it's something like this and then you do what's called a directional brush which will mean that if I do a stroke like this my stamp will get applied in this way like it'll change the angle of that kind of rectangle to fit with the direction of my brush mm, yeah makes sense so when i do something if i do something like this then obviously crazy things are going to happen over here where it's just going to go all over the shop yeah. and create these horrible things in the corner so i then have just taken the settings of his brush and just turned it into a circle so that I don't have that issue in the corners. But sacrifice a little bit of the taper. Right. Yeah. Nice. But at this stage, it doesn't really matter too much. So what I would have done in the past, and I mean the past is like two months ago. Um, we might have to I've... pick this up in the next stream because we're about to we're about to get kicked off. Okay, cool. Yep. Getting um getting deep into it. We will pick this up. Um, on Thursday, so 48 hours from now, um, we're going to pick up where we left off, um, answer any questions you guys, ha guys have. And uh, yeah, Jeremy, thank you so much. We're going to say our goodbyes now. So um, thanks for joining thanks, us. Um, thank you, everybody Good in chat hang for hanging out. And we hope you come back for part two with Jeremy Lord on Adobe Live. Stay safe. See you, guys, See you later. See ya.